The government is now coming after wide open triggers. Let's talk about it. What's up Wolverines? Welcome back to the channel. This is John Crump and this is John Crump News. I'm an investigative journalist and here on John Crump News we talk about everything 2A related. If you would like, comment, and subscribe, it really helps me out with the algorithm. Now that I had a chance to calm down after my last video, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on with Wide Open Triggers. Wide Open Triggers is a product that was sold and manufactured by Big Daddy Enterprises, and it was sold at their website, Big Daddy Unlimited. Wide Open Triggers is a force reset trigger, not much different from the FRT-15. In fact, it was so similar to the FRT-15 that Rare Breed won a patent infringement suit against BDO. Okay, with that out of the way, what is going on now? Last Friday, I started getting word out of Texas that people in the Lone Star State were being visited by the ATF and they were telling the people that they had to hand over their triggers voluntarily or they could be charged with violating the NFA. Now, I've been investigating that and it looks like it has spread to other states. In fact, there's about five other states, including actually about six now, as of today, including Virginia, where the ATF has either showed up at people's doors or made phone calls to those people asking them to turn over their wide open triggers, their wotes, whatever you want to call them. And I've been trying to track down exactly how the government has got this information. I talked to Tony McKnight, the owner of BDU. He insists that he did not give over any information. BDU does use authorized.net and since all these triggers were purchased through the BDU website, it is feasible that authorized.net could have turned over the information, although we're not sure about that because authorized.net has not confirmed or denied if they turned over any information. Authorized.net did turn over information in the Polymer 80 case, so they do have a track record of working with the ATF. Tony McKnight says that they digitally shredded all their documents. And we know we know that digitally shredding does not exactly get rid of the documents. They can still be recovered. The only way to really get rid of them forever is to take the drive where the customer information resides on and shred it, which I'm positive that they did not do. But we're not really sure how the government got this information. All we know is that they did get this information. I reached out to the ATF and they were not forthcoming with how they got the information, but they did reference a letter where it states that if you have one of these triggers, a wide open trigger or an FRT-15 trigger, that they want you to contact your local field office to turn them in. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. I can't say for sure you won't be prosecuted, even though the ETF seems to insinuate that you will not be prosecute, prosecuted if you turn over the trigger voluntarily, but I am just not sure what they will do because the ATF is an evil organization that is overreaching and they want to infringe on mine and your God-given constitutional right to bear arms. But that is for another video, or maybe I've done several hundred videos on that. I'm not really sure. I might have to go back and look at that. But if you have a wide open trigger and you bought it from the BDU website, I would be expecting a call or a visit from the ATF. And what they're going to ask you to do is to sign a document saying that you are voluntarily turning over the trigger. Whether you want to do that or not, that is totally up to you. I am not here to tell you what to do. I am linking my article down below from amelion.com. If you want to read more about it, you can go ahead and read more about it. And you can actually read the letter that the ATF referenced. All right, guys, that is it for today. I love you very much. Stay ever free. Stay ever vigilant. Keeping the fight. I'm out of here. Wolverine's mother.